to this. So it's Wednesday already, and this has been a interesting and an exciting. I'm not exciting in that sense, but you know, a lot of excitement, a lot of excitement in this week, seeing that this is the, you know, the week following the Friday Sabbath when um, Whitney Houston was announced um, to have died or been found dead, and you know, the story is changing so forth. So now we already understand that the music business. You know the so-called music business is um, is a demonic institution. You know, not saying that everybody who has any connection is conscious of that or is consciously involved in that. However, the foundations of it, the 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 systemic, you know, the structure of it is based. On that, and we all know who have studied this issue for um, not good reasons, but there are the there's the evidence that proves that to be so. Now, the main thing that we sought to do some of the videos we uploaded concerning that. Perhaps you probably have seen those particular videos, and it kind of, in a sense, it, it seemed at first to cut across what we were studying in this particular semester, this this Torah portion semester at number 17 concerning um, the Exodus, concerning um, we're moving towards Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai now in our Torah portion um, readings and feedings. And no doubt, you know, this is, this is a book that we have published um, with some compilations right here for Shemot, the Hebrew book of Exodus. Now, we as black people, so-called black folks or African Americans, because Whitney, you know, African American, and a lot of the people that um, have been maybe most directly affected are those African American, as, as well as others. But you know, black people took a special, you know, she was a special symbol for black people, in particular for black woman and, and, and also black men, but mainly for a certain black women. She's a symbol of a, of a generation, um, even her age being 48 years old, which in um, a true perspective is rather young. And this has been repeated, you know, often, you know, in this recent, um, in this recent, um, it is a tragedy, but it's not so shocking. In fact, we're going to say this again, and we're going to try to make a link, and hopefully you'll follow up on this. Um, Tyrio, there's a brother out there doing a set of videos as well. Um, Tyrio, and he basically, his video says that Whitney Houston in or N hell, like the, the, the letter N, the Whitney Houston in hell or in hell, is in hell. And speaking about Don Cornelius, you remember him from um, uh, Soul Train. It's been reported that he he killed himself. He shot himself. Seems like he shot himself in the head. He died of originally it was reported of a gunshot wound, but as you get more of the details about it, it seems as though he shot himself in the head. Um, and he also is a particular symbol and a, and a very iconic figure because the whole Soul Train thing. He was the announcer of Soul Train all those years. Something that used to be on TV quite often, but now they're trying to sell some of the you know, the episodes and seasons and get some money off it, so forth and so on. But it's been off the air for a while, but many of us um who are in that particular age range, we are familiar with growing up on a lot of that music, you know, a lot of that music was part of our um, formative years. In fact, a, a sister in a sister in that we went to school with had accidentally, you know, they call it butt dialing, you know, but had must have had dialed my number and we got back and forth in in a um, what you call it some text messaging so forth and so on. And she said something interesting, you know. Um, yeah, I got to keep in touch with all the peeps from my youth, you know, like from our younger days. But 
when you start to think about it, those of us who are old enough in that sense to be able to kind of recall perhaps uh, 20 or more years previous when ones like Whitney Houston was just coming out, when she was when she was just doing her songs and how that excited many, many of us, you know, like to see this sister, to even Bobby Brown and to see others who's coming from the so-called ghetto and using their musical talents and making money and getting the spotlight and many folks, you know, looked at these individuals and says, yeah, I want to do the same thing. And then many of them um, were reported to get caught up with drugs, what they call drugs, you know, the crack thing, um, the crack epidemic. But what's often left out, and I'm sure many of you all are familiar with this, what's often left out is things like COINTELPRO. And if we go a little further, so-called back, go way back, you know, we go back to Slick Willie Lynch-ism or Slick Willie Lynch or how to make a slave. And much of what we're witnessing now, even though this is supposed to be the dawning of a new age and the new millennium, much of what we're witnessing now is part of the poison that lurk in the mud, which are hatching out, the unresolved issues. But what's being cleverly avoided in the media are these real background issues. You know, there's a campaign out there to, to blame Bobby. We put up a video, and we said in the video, stop blaming Bobby, to say stop blaming Bobby Brown but blame Babylon or blame Babylon, you know, let's blame Babylon. But most folks don't know too much about Babylon or what they know is based on misinformation or disinformation. And to them, Babylon is a mystery. And this is what we read biblically and we study biblically, that mystery Babylon. But there's a point there because it says to come out of Babylon, my people. And the interesting thing that we see in Whitney Houston's um, brief life, as well as in her relationship with her her ex, her former husband, Bobby Brown, and their daughter, Bobby Christina, um, is them trying to get off the grid. In a sense, they tried to get off the grid, but still having, for lack of any better information, sold their souls. In other words, they, they had to make agreements in order to be um, products for the system, in order to be these artists. They had to sign contracts. They had to, you know, a lot of backdoor dealings. In fact, even there's a clip running around where Whitney basically says that her mother, who is a famous uh, gospel, um, Grammy-winning gospel singer, um, CC, I think, um, Sissy or CC, how she basically didn't want her daughter to get into, you know, the the music business, and um, many already feared that if she got in the music business, this eventually would happen. Why? Because many of them, being Christian folks, to some degree, they understood and they also saw where many ones use their talents from the church. You know, they, they, their talents were birthed out in the church, but then they saw the flash and glitter and the glamour of the world. And they thought that, well, I'm a good girl, good boy, whatnot, and, you know, I got roots in the church, but I can now branch out there in the world, and I can be in the world and maybe they thought they could be in the world, but not of the world. But when they stopped paying attention, perhaps, they got deeper and deeper in the world. But for a time, Whitney and Bobby seem to have tried to get off of the grid. You know, they seem to try to have a, you know, but the media was on top of them incessantly. And particularly from the very moment that Whitney Houston took a interest 
in, in Bobby Brown and a relationship started to develop. There were nothing but negative rumors, both coming from certain elements in the black community because the whole light skin, dark skin, Bobby Moore coming from the street life, she's coming out of the black church, and there's these class like a, almost a class warfare. Remember, the background for all of this is how to make a slave. See, so you cannot forget that. And if you don't know that, then you're still seeing, you know, but you're not really comprehending. You're still hearing, but you're not really understanding what is before you. So you're picking up some of it, but to come to a... to come to a balanced perspective, you know, in other words, to be able to really solve the equation, you know, fully solve the equation, you have to look in the full context of things. And what's interesting too, and I haven't heard anybody really mention this just yet, they might mention it or maybe they have and I just haven't heard them, but that is um, Black History Month too. For a moment I haven't mentioned this to a couple of one that say, yeah, you know, it's the shortest month. We already know that February they give us one month and then they have other people have different nationalities and different type of months for different things so it's not really so big you know it's not so big a thing anymore black history month but the fact that this particular incident happened you know it seems to be perhaps stimulating black people to consider their their situation a little more carefully and the reason why we we, we decided to go into this right now is because you know, this is what's going on right now. And we see that there is a divine connection to the bigger picture in all of this that's going on right there, right now. Some of it we already should know already, you know, that um, ones have to sell their souls, you know, in order, and, and there's, there's Satanism and demonism in these sort of industries. Now, people can say, you know, they can argue about it, so forth and so on, and and deny it or whatnot, but the evidence is there. The evidence is clear. And we mentioned the Brother Tariel's video because those of our peeps who hadn't, haven't seen it perhaps, hopefully after they view this, they can go and look up Tariel's video. Um, Whitney Houston in Hell, I'm sure a lot of folks probably have responded to that, but try to check out the original video. And what I pick up from that is a um, is a sincere effort of a brother whose eyes have been opened to really communicate to the brothers and sisters and to others that a lot of these celebrities, artists, and others, and, and even a lot of so-called regular folks haven't really asked the question, what is life? What is my life? You understand? What is the purpose of my life? Why did... Who is God and, and why did God give me these talents, these gifts? You know, the, the main fundamental question is, what is the purpose of life? If the purpose, if one doesn't have God truly, you know, in their life, then they are lost. But for us as black people, we are lost already as lost sheep, as black folks, because we don't know ourselves beyond slavery. You know, we don't, oh, yeah, we're from Africa, but we really don't understand. We have preachers and pastors preaching the Bible, preaching this word, and never, you know, will tell us, or very rarely, should we say, will tell the lost sheep who they really are. And, and, and biblical prophecy of why we have ended up in this hemisphere of the world for 400 plus years, why we have gone through all that we have gone through, and in addition to why what is happening presently right now to us and with ones like Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, the Don Corneliuses on the more on a more personal beta Israel, black Israel level, why these things are happening to us. It's all very clear. And if that was presented and if that's presented, there can be a better chance and hope of um, you know, saving at least a remnant of this people. But unfortunately, um, many have sold themselves. 
you know, have sold themselves, sold their souls, and sold themselves to Satan, and sold themselves to his system. And I mentioned this before, I'm going to conclude this, and then we're going to get into the next part of this, um, this 17th, um, the 17th uh, Rastafari, the Sabbatical portion known as uh, Yitro or Yotor, because we want to deal with the commandments, and, and how our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, how he magnified the commandments and how the commandments are very important. And then I'm going to dovetail some more, some more, I hate to say it, excuse me, children or immature people, but we're going to deal with some more nigger shit. we got to deal with some more nigger shit. What do I mean by more nigger shit? Well, a nigger shit from the nigger churches. You know, because a lot of churches have been preaching a, um, a mixed gospel. You know, a mixed gospel. On some levels, yes, it does reflect the true gospel. But um, moreover, it's a it's a plantation. It's a nigger. It's a nig. It's a Willie Lynchism nigger form of a so-called gospel, and that's one of the primary reasons, you know, why there are more churches, if you notice, in black communities, you know, than other communities. Yet the people, you understand, seem to be more sinful from the very church and, and from the black community's own acknowledgement. Even the street people will tell you. You understand? A lot of them will tell you, listen, many of them will, will know that they are lost, that they are in a form of hell, and if there is a hell, they will go to this hell. You over there, and you say, well, why don't you go to the church? Why don't you go to the preaching, the pastor? And <laughs> you know, and they will basically confess that these ones are fakes. Now, this is the interesting thing, because remember with Christ? I'm talking about the Christ of the Bible, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. It's interesting because the people who he was associated with in his actual ministry, according to the Bible, which I trust much more than I trust these um, um, reverends and pastors and, and other so-called pretenders, counterfeit representatives of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It basically says that it was the, um, he said the, the, he was with the, 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 the politicians, not the politicians, well, the politicians too, but a lot of the so-called like the prostitutes and the pimps and those sort of folks. Those were the folks that he associated himself with, and those were the sort of folks that even Christ said, according to the Bible, he said that the, um, the publicans and the, like the prostitutes and the pimps and the rest of them, they will make it into the kingdom before all of these so-called goody two-shoe, righteous, so-called Sunday church-going folk. And, 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 and the reason why, and Christ said it, he said, many will say, Lord, Lord, you understand? And he will say, get away from me, you lawless ones, you understand? Because you did not do you understand? You did not do the things that I commanded, and they did not keep the full gospel, because otherwise they would have told this people, this black people, who they are. And with that information even alone, black folks would have been able to, to, to look up the rest and to find the rest. And therefore, these sort of things that are happening now wouldn't seem so shocking. In fact, many of these things that are happening now would not have happened and much more that is about to happen because it's not over. This is just the beginning. This is just only the beginning. So with that being said, we're going to allude to, you know, black folks, you understand, and black people's condition vis-a-vis -vis the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ as we go through the, the semester as we go through the teachings, as we touch on other points, because it's it's relative to the big picture, to the big picture, to the half of the story. So, brothers and sisters, stay tuned. We just want to make a, a little word, like segue between our previous videos um, in this particular week, this particular seven days, and we want to go get into the the, uh, the Ten Commandments, the importance of the Ten Commandments, you know, because what a lot of these counterfeit churches teach is that we're now no longer under the law to say that the law doesn't really matter. You understand? We got grace. We're not living by law now. 
but 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 what is affecting this this people? It's laws. They are still under laws. So who are they deceiving? Oh, they're saying they're not under God's law, right? So they can they can be lawless with God, but be judged by man's laws. What kind of hypocrisy? But see, this is why the Bible says they're lost sheep. You understand? Sheep, a sheep will go over a cliff. And if you ever seen this, one of the most horrible things. It's interesting, but horrible. A, a sheep, sheep will find a shepherd. Sheep, one sheep will go over. Remember, the sheep are like the female. Actually, the sheep are the female, are the females. So when you see in the Bible talk about um, um, sheep, you know, he's the shepherd. But in the context, Christ is the ram. You know what I'm saying? Christ, the one that has the horns, he's the ram. But the sheep are more than not the female ones, the ones without the horns. It's a little, it's a little nuance um, to that. And you see a lot of these so-called black churches filled up with black women. You know what I'm saying? Still in their sins. You know what I'm saying? Still have not thought differently according to what Christ teaches in the Bible says, but are just given what their itching ears want to hear. So they're in a false sense, in a delusion, in a confusion. Because, you, you know, let, 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 let's just be real. Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston, they went all the way to, to Israel, saw a black community who are living the word of God. You understand? I mean, I mean are living, I mean, coming from the same experience and, and, and are in the state of Israel. You understand? I'm speaking about the African Hebrews and the and the Black Hebrew community of Jerusalem, um, Ben Ben Ami, Ben Israel, that brother in that particular community that went over there from here from America to I think Liberia to Africa, then from Africa to Israel, and then been there in the state of Israel. I, I mean, th this is the key. They found Zion. Even they said it. it, it I, we went and looked at the some of the articles. Um, I think Whitney said it. Um, oh, Israel is is a it was a spiritual retreat. It, it was a place of safety. You understand? They, they went there for purification and purging, and and but they did not stay. What happened? They came back into this nonsense. Now, if their pastors and preachers had let them know exactly who they were. See, they heard it from they heard it from the African Hebrew brothers, the the Hebrew Israelites, Black Hebrews brothers and sisters. They hear from ones like us, but then when they go to their nigger preacher, the nigger preacher shakes his head because he's just a plantation Willie Lynch, how to make a slave nigger preacher, who, as um, um, Mary Sanger said, you understand, who are they going to use, you understand, to keep the sheeple, the sheeple. They're going to use these Negro preachers. You understand? So we have to confront the so-called, you understand, church. The church which Christ did not build, but the church that was had been built and is falsely in his name but is not preaching the fullness of his gospel. It's, it's very serious, brothers and sisters, because the brother Tyree on his video, he said, and, and his video is, I love his video because it's not going into all the details and all the teaching there, but it's basically keeping the message fairly simple and direct that these ones did not use their lives for God, but instead have sold their souls. You understand? And basically, in a sense, because they have sold their souls, they're living on borrowed time. So if they think in their nigger hearts and nigger minds, oh, I'm going to play hooky from Babylon. I'm going to do what I want to do because I'm a celebrity. And I got some cha-ching-ching, -ching, so forth and so on. They think that that contract and those contracts that they signed with those devils are not going to come due. You've just seen what you've seen. That's what it basically is. They said she was broke, right? They said Whitney Houston was broke before this, right? Well, look, look at the facts. She don't own none of the, the, the rights to her song. She didn't, she didn't compose it. She didn't write it. Uh, she didn't publish it. She did not know. What did she not know? Even Michael Jackson knew this a little bit more. 
than Whitney did. What then did she know? She didn't know the law. The law, the very same thing these cotton-picking nigger churches be half-stepping, telling the folks, you're not under the law. The law is Old Testament. We live by grace. Even pork, you know, pork, Christ didn't eat pork. People say you can eat whatever you want, you understand? But then they frown on one that they go to the club. How can I eat pork, which is forbidden, and then if I go to the club, you see, this is what the, the confusion that goes on in niggas' hearts, and you can't reach the people when they get to a certain age because they've already dealt with this confusion in their head, and no one ever has taught them the truth. It says, what does Whitney's song, Whitney has a song that says, I believe the children are the future. You, you know what? Teach them. Teach them. This is still what is neglected, the teaching of his majesty and his Christ. Brothers and sisters, the time is real short, you understand? But the good news is there is still hope in the King of Kings and his Christ. There's still hope of finding Zion. There's still hope of coming out of Babylon before it's too late. But here's the key thing. The choice is yours. That's the main thing. The choice is yours. And you're getting the examples, you know? You're getting the examples before you. As Moses said to the people, I put before you two ways, two ways, life and death. Choose ye this day who you will serve. Will you serve Jah Rastafari? Will you serve the true Jah, the true God and Father of our black and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Or are you going to worship the golden calf? That, that's the main point. Many of the Negroes, unfortunately, have chosen to worship the golden calf. And our personal dibs on the Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown situation is like the Matrix movie. They found Zion. They, they, they found Zion. But they turned their backs like the guy in the movie. Remember the Matrix movie first part, the guy who wanted to eat debtors? He wanted to eat meat. Remember, he wanted to eat meat, so he was meeting with Mr. Smith secretly away from the others while he was telling the others, yeah, 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 I'm still down with you. But he was meeting with Mr. Smith he had a restaurant or something. He wanted to get um, put back into the Matrix. It's like Bobby Brown and, 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 and Whitney Houston. They wanted to get back into the game that they rejected. You know, they came out of it. They were looking for something. They, they were. And we see when they went to the state of Israel, and they met that black Hebrew, black Israelite, Hebrew Israelite community, you can see that they found, you understand, they found in a sense what they were looking for. You know, th that, that was one of the bright moments of their relationship. But forces were at work. And unfortunately, they gave in to those forces. They got reinserted in the matrix, you know. But um, when you make a deal with the devil, right? There's no grace. There's no forgiveness. The devil don't forgive. Satan, he doesn't forgive. They don't forgive. You know, you don't sign a deal with the devil, get into his demonic industry, and then think because you got celebrity and you got a whole bunch of, a bunch of cattle fans, who, who says, whatever you do, I'm with you. They ain't going to help you. The debts are going to come due. And unfortunately, in Whitney Houston's case, you know, the debts came due. And when we get into the law in the next portion of this, when we get into Torah and to, and to the, what's called the Ten Commandments, but more correctly, it's the command. It's ten words. Ten words, one command. That's the point we want to make clear in the next part of this, in the next part of this series, right here. But um, everyone keeps asking, right? What about her daughter? What about Bobby Christina? What about Bobby Christina? Now, why is that significant? Let me show you something right here. We're going to conclude this part right here, which is just inspiration. We, you know, this. Ah. Uh, People, 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 people. You know, I know, I know some are hearing, but are you really comprehending this? Do you really see 
you know, are your eyes really open to see? Here, here, here's what it says right here. It says, uh, Exodus chapter 20. It says, um, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Now, put a footnote via Oprah. Because Oprah had a problem when she heard this. You know, I mean, I mean, the woman has a book club. Woman is... I thought she's smart. I thought she's like an intellectual or something. But that's really foolish because she thought God is jealous of her. No. Jah is jealous and zealous for her because she too is one of his people. You understand? Lost sheep as she is, she too is one of her, one of his people. She too. You understand? Um... But the idiot woman basically, you know, she went on and said, this is what, I, I used to go to the church, but the old rugged cross, rah, 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 but, you know, and said, God is jealous of me. How is God, I, I did a, did a, some vids on that already, some previous vids on that, but that's still a main point right there. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of foolish and ignorant people who hang on her word. And so when they heard that, they're like, that's right. I can't work. God, jealous God. So they followed her. That's why I mentioned about the sheep again. One sheep will go over a cliff. And the other sheep, even though they can see that the sheep that have gone before must be dead. They, they went over a cliff. They're all, they're all white and red, bloodied up. The other sheep will go over the cliff will go until or unless a shepherd would intervene or intercede. Unless a shepherd intercedes, those sheep will go, one sheep will go over. And, and people say, well, you might not get it yet because, you know, you you, 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 you was born and raised in the city or a project. So, or, and your, your imagination and your, your seeking of knowledge is limited. But these parables in the scripture, you understand, um, our education Awareness environment has ill prepared us. This is why we must study and show ourselves approved. When you look at the nature of sheep, you understand? Sheep have a real, I won't say silly, but a real a gullible, very trusting, very like believe, believe anything. This is why the sheep have a shepherd. And, and the priests and the preachers and the pastors, I'm talking about the black, the nigger preachers and pastors, all up in your ghetto, all up in your neighborhood, some of them are good. But there are a few. There are a few out there who are true and real. But unfortunately, the majority of them are leading the people, black people especially, and have led black people especially astray. And Jah, Jah has something for them. You understand? And time is running out. And you're going to see the judgment is going to start to hit these churches because Jah is getting fed up with that. And, and it's about time. You understand? And it's about time. But here in Exodus chapter 20, it says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I, Yahweh, Eloheka, I, the Lord thy God, am a zealous God. Not jealous. You understand? But zealous. He is zealous for our well-being. Visiting the iniquity, which is to say the rebellion of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So to those who are haters, you know, people talk about haters. Oh, you're being a hater. How many of y'all are haters of Jah? How many of you are haters of the King of Kings? You're all the real haters, you see. But Jah is merciful. He's still giving you all time, you understand, to recognize yourself, to, to know yourselves, and, and to repent of yourselves, and to think differently, you understand. But, you know, what, what will, you know, what what will your answer be? But everyone's talking about what's going to happen with Bobby and Christina. I think that's interesting. Because John says right here that um, if the parents worship the false gods and the children willy-nilly follow the parents and worship the false gods to the third, to the fourth, 
and on and on and on, as many generations that continue to rebel against the truth. And I'm speaking, this is a message particularly to black people. This is a message particularly, not only, but particularly. You, you see, because God has a message to the Jew, to the blacks, you know what I'm saying, the true blacks, and to the Gentiles and everybody else. That's the facts. That's the facts of the man. We're speaking about his, his, his ethnic people. You understand? We're speaking about his racial people. Because black people are those people that you read about in the Bible. You understand? Like it, like it or lump it. You understand? It's black people. And many of them, many of the other folks, they know this. You see, but as long as black people can be led astray, Jah is not a respecter of persons. So if the people who are, are wild olive trees have been grafted into this vine, like the, the, the European and other Jews, you know what I mean, grafted in and if they do well and they keep, you know, Jah will bless them. He will. He's not a respecter of persons, even though he know that it's to the descendants of Abraham, Yishak, and, and, and Yaakov, all these dumbass niggas over here in the Americas and the Caribbean, these rebellious-ass Negroes who continue to want and desire and pant nothing more than to live in the image of the beast. And we see it every day. Black woman, why don't you wear your hair natural? Because it's too difficult. It doesn't die. I like my SJ. I like my S blind. Well, don't you know that's like, that's like being like a white woman? No, it's not. It's beauty. It's manageability. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you don't, then maybe you should go watch a music video or something like that. But it says, um, thou shall not bow down. So it's saying right here that it's a generational curse. So now the attention is being focused on the daughter, Bobby Christina. And then you hear something very interesting in the background. Um, um, what about uh, Bobby Brown? Hopefully Bobby Brown won't profit from this. Or hopefully he won't get none of the inheritance. Or hopefully he won't have no part of it. Or he's not going to get any money. Is he going to get any money? He, what is this? See, that's the part, of the, that's the, part of, of, of the haters, the haters of the black male, after all they have turned the black male into a crime. Black male is a crime. Being a black male is a crime. And some of you will say, no, it's not, because we have a black president. Well, yeah, he got a white mama. I'm talking about when you have a nigger mama. Being a black male is a crime. Because the first one they say, don't be under a black male. Black male is a crime. Oh, no, it's not that kind of black male. You got it wrong. You, you, no, no, see, what they don't understand, word, sound, and power. You see, saying black male or saying black male is to say black male. You get it? Saying black male or saying black male in the hearts and minds of the public. This is part of the spell. This is how they work spell. You see what I'm saying? Is a crime, plain and simple. You know, um, okay, why don't we call it white male? And why do why you call it black male anyway? Where, where does this name come from? Can any of you all explain it? How did the black male, M-A-I-L, is the male they send to people black? Is, is that what it is? See, see most of you all think you all went to college or you got some education. You got education from slave Masa. Masa only told you what he wants you to know. Master only told you so much so that you can turn him a prophet. And remember what How to Make a Slave says. How to Make a Slave says that the black woman, the black woman is very important for slave masters' economy. It's very important for white supremacist economy. We're living at a time of change. Don't you see the news? Don't you see people all over the world are rising up against their government, against oppression, so forth and so on, and even turning to whatever means necessary? But will you ever see that on this plantation? Ah, it, 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 it seems unlikely. But this is the reason why they turn their attention to Bobby Christina, because... Um, they have most likely the potential, especially through, through what happened to Whitney, you know, to work their magic and work their spell and, and, and have another hater of Jah, another hater of his way, another 
another commodity. This is what it is, commodity. It's just like in plantation. There's a music plantation. It's a form of slavery. Civil rights, basically, so-called civil rights, basically, and some of you all might not like this because you're foolish, civil rights basically had done shit for black people. You understand? What really went on in the 60s is COINTELPRO. Do you know what the COINTELPRO counterintelli um, 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 counterintelligence program was really, really about? It was about stopping the rise of the black messiah. It was to stop black people from being as whole, as well-being, as sovereign, as white people or any other people. Black people are the lowest pieces of shit in the world because of this system. Uh, the sooner you get it, the better. Because Ja is, is, is very much, he's waiting for that remnant. Ja is waiting for that remnant, those few. You understand? And the question is, will you be of that number? You understand? Ask yourself, what do you think? You think Whitney Houston's name is in the book of life? Do you think a lot of these Negroes who have sold themselves and never really sacrificed themselves or never really had the boldness or the courage to live for Jah fully and to, and, and even if the world is against you, you know Jah is for you. But who were they serving? And then you weep for them. Then you cry for them. Then you idolize them. You Negroes. I'm, 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 I'm done on this particular point for now. So, brothers and sisters, stay tuned for the commandment.